Meditation is a matter of technique and a matter of values. The technique has to do with getting the mind centered, learning how to create a good space inside with the breath and with your thoughts, thinking about the breath in a way that's helpful, asking good questions about it. Is it too long or too short? When you make up your mind to stop breathing in and start breathing out, what do you base your decision on? What are the signals inside that tell you, okay, the breath has gone long enough now, now it's time to stop, turn around? Pay attention to that, because a lot of your sensitivity to how you deal with your body depends on issues just like this. And the more sensitive you can be to your relationship to your body, the, your relationship to the breath, the more subtle pleasures you're going to be able to create inside. And you do this not just for yourself. You're less subject to greed, aversion, and delusion coming from your own mind. People around you are going to be less subject to those things as well. And as you're more sensitive to the energies inside your body, become more sensitive to the energies around you. You have to protect yourself sometimes because there's a lot of negative energies out there. But if you fill the breath with good energy and you fill the body with good energy, that becomes your space, and that becomes your protection as well. So working with the breath gives you lots of ways of finding a sense of well-being as you go through the day whether you're at the monastery or outside the monastery, sitting with your eyes closed or walking around, doing other things. The breath is always there. Your relationship to the breath is always happening. And the extent to which you can spare a little of your attention to stay with how the breath energy is feeling in the body and what you can do to make it better. It's time well spent, energy well spent. A lot of times we go through the day thinking about this, that, and the other thing as we're doing our jobs. It's not like we're doing one single task all the time. So make this one of the tasks. Make it a foundation task. In other words, it's not just one more ball that you're trying to keep in the air as you're juggling all the other balls of your life. It's the place where you're standing as you juggle everything else. One of the things you begin to notice is that as you try to stay with the breath, the mind goes slipping outside. This is where the question of values comes in. What's worth going out for and what's not? And having a technique that creates a sense of well-being inside changes your system of values in and of itself. You begin to realize that the energy that's put into this kind of pleasure is a lot more rewarding than the energy you put in a lot of other things. But sometimes the technique on its own is not enough to change your values. And John Cha has a nice image. He talks about a cup. He says the cup is already broken. The nature of every cup in the world is that someday it's going to be broken. So you simply accept that fact and think of it in terms of it's already being broken. But you don't treat it casually. You do your best to take care of it. Because as long as the cup is in good shape, you can benefit from it, other people can benefit from it. So you look after it. But you don't have any emotional feeding that's going on to keeping the cup together. And if it's what happens that one day the cup does fall from your grasp, regardless of your intentions, that's that. We have to learn how to think about the world in the same way. The world is already broken. It doesn't mean you give up on it. It means you take care of it as best you can. At the same time, you maintain your sense of stability inside. And you recognize your limitations. There's always so much that you can do for the world. 
There's a lot of things and a lot of people out there that are beyond your ability to have any control over at all. So you focus on what you can control and what is worth putting your effort into. This is what the, the value issue is. This question of values goes all the way through the practice. What's worth giving away, what's worth keeping, just in terms of material things, in terms of your generosity. It's a question of values. Some things you really like, but you realize that there's more benefit that comes from giving it away, we give it away. There are some advantages you can gain from breaking the precepts, but they're not worth it. It's a question of values. Even when the Buddha gets into subtle issues of insight, that's when he's asking the questions about inconstancy, stress, and not self. That last one is a question of values. You think about your body, feelings, perceptions, thought constructs, consciousness. Are they constant or inconstant? Well, they're inconstant. If something is inconstant, is it pleasant or stressful? Well, even with the pleasure that comes with pleasant feelings, they're stressful if you're trying to hold on to them. And the last one, the Buddha doesn't say, have you concluded, well, there must be no self. He says, is it worth holding on to as yourself? Is it worth claiming as yourself? And the answer is it's not worth it. It's a question of values. So like to look at your life in these terms and use the techniques you have gained from learning how to meditate, learning how to be more generous, be more virtuous. See how those techniques help change your values. And if the technique on its own doesn't change the values, well, start thinking in terms of what the Buddha says about the world. It's swept away. It does not endure and offers no shelter. That doesn't mean you trash the world. There was a strange article in Tricycle a while back about how people who believe that they can gain nirvana on their own are the ones who are responsible for fracking. I don't know anybody who fracks for nirvana. The idea being that we have to put aside our well-being for the sake of the world. And if you're looking for your own well-being, you're selfish, and you're, that's the mental attitude that creates problems in the world. But it's not the case. You have to look after yourself well, because otherwise the ways you try to help the world, if your own house isn't in order, can create a lot of havoc. If everyone looked after themselves and had that attitude toward the world, that the, symbolized by the broken cup, okay, the world is broken. But you try to use it as well as you can. Get the best use out of it. It doesn't mean just your own personal use. You realize many times giving things away, being generous with your time, is in your larger best interest. So you look after the world in line with your abilities, but accept the fact that ultimately it's all beyond you. And whether the craziness of the world that we're going through right now is going to get crazier or somehow go away. You can't make your practice depend on that. You keep doing your thing, doing your best. Look after your range of responsibility. And if the time comes where you have to let go, you let go. This, of course, requires that you have something really solid inside that's not part of the world. This is why we go deeper and deeper in the meditation, not just working with the breath to gain a state of concentration, but you try to use that to get deeper inside to see what's driving you, to keep on feeding and keep wanting to feed on the world. And what can you learn about strengthening the mind so it doesn't need to feed anymore? So that's where these questions of value come from. What's worth feeding on? What's worth eating? 
then when can the mind come up to a point where it doesn't need to feed anymore? That practice is something worth feeding on, because it gives you the strength that ultimately leads you to freedom, where you place no burdens on the world at all. So work on the technique, work on the values. Together they can make your life a lot better. And to the extent that your life touches other people's lives, it helps make their lives better as well.